Wow, I have been waiting for this case for four months and it's finally time. Let's unbox. It is the new H500P, very excited about it because it's the continuation of the half series or the high airflow. So let's see if this thing is any good. Accessory box. I like that they come in bags now. It's good. Wow, so this thing is absolutely beautiful despite having so much plastic. They made it feel and look premium and that's an awesome thing. But you know what? I'm a little bit disappointed that the half series is no longer revived. Now we're stuck with the H series. So let's see how they did, shall we? Right after this. What? Is that the View 31? You should put a ring on it. Yes, time to make it RGB official. Thermaltake ring high static pressure fans because your case deserves a ring. Full details in the description below. All right, so this is the beautiful new airflow focused case, the H500P, priced at $149. It's available in only one color, the metal gray that I absolutely love. We have a couple of 200 millimeter RGB fans at the front that do all the heavy airflow lifting. And there's a tempered glass side panel as well with an elegant mount that you can open with just your nail, a coin, or some other slim object. Now, I think there are many features on this one that we'll see spread through the case industry. So really glad to see Cooler Master setting examples once again. Now, I want to start with the exterior that like I said earlier feels and looks awesome the front and top panels are fully plastic so they reduce the weight but the color uniformity is fantastic between the metal and the plastic and unless you're touching the surface you can't even tell that that's transparent plastic and not glass it looks like clear glass both at the front and the top although while convenient neither are secured by anything so removing the top is super simple you just simply pull it off and we can't ignore that unpleasant sound the plastic is flexible it's it scratches easily and I'm not sure why the top is fully transparent also. Here the fan bracket is awesome with flexible mounting strips so you'll definitely want to utilize this area for radiator or fans so my 360 rad fits. This thick 280mm EK radiator fits as well and even triple 140mm fans will fit into this bracket which by the way is symmetrical so you can rotate it after mounting your hardware on it if needed. And we have about 70 millimeters until the rear fan so clearance is plenty. Both panels are pretty deep to allow airflow to enter or exit with mesh built in to catch the dust, but just be prepared for routine maintenance to keep that plastic clear. I was surprised to find a gap on the front panel on both sides that will surely contribute to interior dust buildup. The front panel has a two-step mount that is also easily removable, and here we find those giant 200mm fans that intake air from the sides, and I'm curious to see how the interior of that plastic window will look like after a few weeks. But it is this way, so the fans act as that lighting centerpiece, and I wish that the assembly line took extra care with those center black stickers because they are misaligned on both fans, and that makes them look like they're wobbling. It's really distracting and takes away from that gorgeous RGB illumination. That, by the way, is not controlled through the I.O. like I was expecting. As you can see, we only have USB, no Type-C, unfortunately, audio jacks and power reset buttons, with the main power button feeling slightly wobbly, but with a tasteful outer glow. So instead to control the fan lighting we have a 4-pin RGB connector that's quite common on the motherboards so the user has the full control of the lighting and you can also link other LED strips or potentially other fans since we have an additional 4-pin plug as part of that cable bundle. So fan illumination is quite nice they are bright in the middle with spill into the blades and this way you can color match to other hardware set whatever lighting effects and not really worry about preloaded color presets or effects that might not match your hardware. And I think this is the way forward for built-in illumination since most recent motherboards include the 4-pin RGB connector and if you don't, no <laughs> fan lighting for you and there's also a 140mm exhaust fan included. Also the front fans are a little bit loud, obviously you can lower the RPM through the motherboard but this way the airflow is pretty weak and it doesn't help that they're installed outside of the frame so half of that ventilation area on the sides is behind the fan. 
Both side panels have a two-step removal process when they angle off the bottom rail and can be lifted off after, with captive thumb screws included on the right side panel. As you can see, the interior is a bit different from the Master Case series in that the module rail to the right of the motherboard is no longer there, so you cannot install drive cages or other accessories like we see on this Master Case 5T. Instead, this area is now occupied by this metal shroud cover that is supposed to cover up the cables exiting from behind it, but it's only used for EATX motherboards, as otherwise you'll obviously just use the uh, rubber grommets and route the cables through that. I find it odd that this bracket has no reservoir mounting holes in case you decide to water cool, so perhaps they are targeting this for air cooling systems only. I do like that we have vertical PCI slots that can be used with the optional GPU bracket to show off your graphics card through that window. Now the power supply shroud is a dual piece design with two SSD caddies on top, and notice there are no cutout openings anywhere aside from underneath the motherboard and behind those SSD caddies. Removing the first shroud gets us access to the drive cage with dual caddies underneath it that can be moved away from the front to make room for a radiator and we have additional 60 millimeters of clearance in that case. But then installing back the shroud, it doesn't fit unless you remove the closest SSD caddy. I don't like this compromise at all even though we have an additional SSD mount behind the motherboard tray for relocation. Furthermore, it appears that we have three mounting locations for the drive cage but only two secure points at the front. So this entire basement feels rushed and not exactly refined, especially since we need to remove the second shroud piece, and that's an additional five screws to install the power supply, which has a dust filter, and so that's good. On the other side, notice there are two more covers, a plastic plate that sits over the CPU cutout that I find a little bit pointless since the side of the case is closed anyway, but you can stuff cables inside of it, so that's good. But the larger front metal cover in theory needs to hide all those cables entering into the other side, but notice the spacing and how close it is to the actual frame. This means that we can only route cables from underneath, and this makes cable work a bit more difficult than it needs to be. Now, I do appreciate all the modular panels where everything is kind of removed, we get this bare bones frame, but they need to do something about the mounting as a screwdriver is definitely needed, but at least it's all the same screw for everything. Now, I haven't talked about the front airflow options because if you swap out those fans then what's the point really but you can install a 360 rad at the front without removing the 200 millimeter fans so we have plenty of clearance from the top but notice this frame has a top section cut out for five and a quarter inch drive base and therefore this bracket is included for front top fan installation on my unit the mounting holes are misaligned so i wouldn't be able to secure the top portion of the fan if i went that route and this is clearly the cause of reusing the frame that has not gone through the strict refinement process and that's unfortunate. I keep using the lack of refinement with Cooler Master cases, but you know what? That's the way it is for some reason. So now, let's build. So this is the interior, it's super clean, that's expected when all the paneling is installed. The cutout on the power supply shroud could be expanded slightly, it's already a little bit crowded and uh, I haven't even routed the SSDs. And this front cover is a little bit bare, since nothing can be installed on it, so I'm thinking this case doesn't really need to be this long. On the other side, getting that large panel in place took some force, I really wish that it was more open to make routing easier, but this is one of those things that I hope to see on more cases. To me, this looks better than even installing that solid side panel, and depending maybe on your color scheme, uh, you can highlight some sleeved cables here, and everything is already flat, and really adds to the character of the H500P. The only thing missing is some form of cover near the power supply area, so you can have that full industrial exposed look. And finally, putting the glass on, the H500P is bringing back airflow focus trends with some excellent paneling direction that needs some refinement, but let's leave that to the competition because this open frame concept is pretty unique and I can't wait to see more. The new Corsair Void Pro gaming headset is comfortable, stylish in different colors, delivers fantastic wireless performance even for competitive gaming with an all new microphone for clear communications. Check out the Void Pro Wireless or Wired in the description below.
So Cooler Master yet again demonstrated forward thinking with the four pin RGB connectors for those fans. Rear paneling is awesome. The visuals are fantastic, but you know what? It lacks refinement in the shroud design. Stickers on the fans are misaligned. Interior panels need more function. Front fan bracket on my unit is misaligned and the plastic exterior panels need to be more rigid. And so that's all I have to say about the new half. I'm both excited about this new feature rollout, but I'm a bit disappointed with their implementation and their refinement. Hopefully we'll see more uh, similar things from Cooler Master really soon and maybe something from the competition as well. But let me know what you think about the new H500P in the comments below. Check out these other relevant videos and we'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe. Yeah.